Look, there's been a call. There has been a call that many of you, I know many of you people who listen to the platform quite like. It is a call for an end to woke procurement, particularly in local government. I think Wayne Brown's been on about this. No more woke consultants. And God knows there are plenty of them, plenty of wokesters out there saying you must be this or that or rainbow or diverse or care for the environment. And one government MP is leading the charge, it would seem, to get rid of woke overspending, misspending or unnecessary spending in across the public service. His name is Cameron Luxton. He's an ACT MP and he joins us on the line now. Cameron, uh, welcome to the platform. Good to have you with us. Yeah, good morning, Sean. Thanks for having me. All right. Now, un- in under what job, what part of being MP, are you the person to lead the charge against woke procurement? Oh, well, you could say I'm the spokesperson for uh, infrastructure, housing, local government uh, for the ACT Party, but really I'm a, I'm a guy who's been a builder and a farmer and a supplier of services to the good people of New Zealand. Uh, I've met many people also who have, who have been uh, confronted with this progressive procurement or woke procurement, as you're calling it, which is fair enough, if that's what it is. You know, these sort of things are insulting to people who are providing a good service and being called to account for their genealogy if they want to carry on, and it's not productive for our country. You know, I commend Wayne Brown for calling for a review into this sort of woke procurement because you might have seen, I mean, this is what's triggered uh, the recent round of attention on it, the Ward Group, they were all uh, that are providing great services in Auckland in the round of demolition. It was said that they couldn't even bid for contracts because they didn't you know, meet the box-ticking exercise that was put in front of them by Auckland City Council. But this goes beyond Auckland City Council. Central government has been doing this since... Give, give me since some Willie examples of... There. And let's use the common parlance. Give me some examples of woke procurement in government. Yeah, well, so, so Willie Jackson uh, brought in a a progressive procurement for the last government. It set a target of 5% Māori-owned businesses and they've increased that to 8% and it's getting reported back this year and there's going to be a review of it, I understand, from the Cabinet paper in 2024, which I'm hoping will be about mid-June. And that, at that point, I think it's a good time for us to get rid of it. That's Act's principles. And as an MP, as you say, not in Cabinet, I'm going to be... Uh, advocating on Act's principle of equal treatment and good money. Because essentially the it's a quota system, isn't it? You must, Basically, yeah. And you must, and you was okay, okay, th- this is interesting, okay, and you're doing this off your own bat, it's not part of a government strategy, you're doing it as a an MP and, and member of the government. Uh, and I think many people w- would agree with you, this is just crazy, that you've got to be woke or you don't get the government job. And in fact, in the private sector, we've had a very uh, high profile example in the last week that if you are woke, often you're not running as good a business and you're not as efficient uh, uh, vis-a-vis News Hub. Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, getting into the ins and outs of it, I mean, News Hub is their own thing. I just feel a bit sorry for a company that's competing against Multi TV, Radio New Zealand, TVNZ. To have They're to, all subsidised you know, by one way or another same, by you and me. Yeah, it, yes, exactly. But, I mean, this, I, it, at the end of the day, this is just another bureaucratic hurdle that doesn't yeah. help New Zealand become more productive. Okay. You know, we've got, yeah, I, I think, right, oh, sorry, you wanted to no, carry no, on. No, 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 I just want to ask a question. Yeah. Does the, would the woke procurement include government agencies like ACC and government organisations that spend thousands of dollars a year getting the rainbow tick, which is basically <laughs> a grift by a bunch of gay people to say, we will cancel your business if you don't pay us some money and say you're rainbow friendly. Yeah, well, there's, there's, in this realm of, uh, um, I mean, progressive procurement for Māori businesses, there's, there's grifters that have, have started a bit of a cottage industry, as it were, uh, supplying services to businesses who have done the sufficient searching through their family tree and found yeah. Well, what about, as I say, classes. progressive procurement is not limited to issues involving Māori. It is also the diversity, 
the gender diverse mm. and the rainbow community who are doing essentially the same thing. Are you going to take them on as well? Look, the difference with this one and what I'm talking about in this particular case is that this is a government policy setting. It's got a policy, there is a current yeah. policy for a target from central government contracting services from businesses and, author and authorities contracting services, which is abhorrent. We shouldn't be having that. And that is what I'm going after at the moment. I think it isn't a good thing to have, especially when we've got a productivity issue. You know, we yeah. should be enabling people to get on with it, not searching through their family tree for some kind of negative one drop rule absurd situation in the 21st mm -hmm. century. But don't you realise that Maori spirituality too can lead to very innovative scientific breakthroughs? And, and if and when something like that happens, I'm sure the service that will be provided would be sufficient to get the contract on its own merit. But right. if the service isn't good enough on based on a, the production of it, the cost effectiveness of it, the delivery time frames, then it shouldn't be getting another wave through based on something else. All right. Now, Cameron, you are a list MP, right? But you're from Tauranga. Correct, yes. Right. Do you get the accommodation... Um, Benefit supplement yep. for living in how much a year yep. are you pulling? Um, my rent is 125 a week in Wellington. Is that all? Which, well, mate, I went and found the cheapest uh, bed I could, but I think it was quite. I was quite surprised at the high cost in Wellington. But I guess when there's a whole lot of uh, my producer Ben, three from, guys in his flat, they're playing 950 a week, mate. Between the three of them, 900 a week. Sorry, yeah. three people. Oh well, look. Okay. So, so do you claim that money back? Uh, so, the, the, yeah, uh, parliamentary services, this is all yeah, new yeah. to me as a new MP, parliamentary services get pay a accommodation supplement, uh, some some kind of allowance that we, that can, but you, you send in your tenancy yeah. agreement and, and you still pay it out of your account, but that comes in with your pay. 